Okay then, um, so welcome to the webinar. Thanks everyone for joining us today. I'm Louise Bennett, Tigers Head of Marketing, and I'm joined by our Chief Operating Officer, Ben Nicklin. Hi there, good morning everyone. Welcome to our partners, customers, and uh, you know, I believe there might even be a couple of, uh, of our competitors on the call, which is always, always fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, so some of you will have attended our update in the autumn of last year and this session is very much going to be a follow-up to that. So we're going to be covering what we've been seeing in the UC and collaboration space in the last six months essentially since we last saw you. Um, what we've been doing as a business to align to that. Um, excitingly Ben is going to show some of our latest developments on Tiger Prism and we're also going to be talking to you about what we're going to be launching um, in the next couple of quarters, the next six months or so. Um, so lots going on as part of this webinar. So before we get started, just a few housekeeping points. Um, we're expecting this to be around 30 minutes and there should be um, plenty of time at the end for you guys to ask questions. If you do have a question though throughout, you can either add that to the chat um, or email hello at tiger.io. I'm going to keep an, an eye on that inbox and we'll cover those off at the end. Um, so let's get started then, Ben. Can you talk to us about um, what we've been seeing in the UC analytics space since our autumn update? Yeah, of course. Thanks, Louise. Um, so I think what we, we've seen is that, um, that there's clearly a, a real appetite um, within our customer base and our partners now where um, during the pandemic, I think there was a, a significant kind of need for businesses to focus on, you know, just just addressing the fact that we needed to continue working. Um, and how that work took place was more important than maybe sort of the information around how people were communicating, how people were adapting to that work. Um, whereas now things are sort of, you know, hybrid workings really set in uh, for businesses. Um, and we're seeing that real kind of drive for I want to understand more. And equally, I want to put that information in the hands of the people that, that can use it. Um, we're also seeing customers begin to refocus on longer term strategies. So again, they've made decisions um, to you know, adopt a particular type of technology. Um, they've em embraced that, but you know, that might not be the three to five year solution for them. So they're now looking at how do we maybe you know, reconsider what's on, on the market? Does that meet our needs better? Um, and, and so we're seeing investment in that um, and research. We're also sort of seeing some vendors who have lost some market share over the last couple of years come back with new propositions, new innovations, um, and actually clearly, you know, they're, they're trying to secure their existing base and they're trying to actually sort of, you know, acquire net new again that they might have, have, have sort of lost over the last couple of years. Um, and also there was a lot of, of businesses that felt that um, sort of some of the included analytics features would meet their needs. And it's become quite clear that although from an IT function that could be the case, it's not actually, as I mentioned earlier, putting the, ha the information in the hands of the people that can use it, or it's yeah. not as user friendly, it's not as real time, and therefore they're actually sort of coming back to reassess what can Tiger offer for me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's interesting. It makes a lot of sense. So how does that play into what we've been doing as a business? So we, we've been really sort of laser focused on supporting that customer base, you know, like many other businesses, um, you know, the, the pandemic could have presented a lot of challenges um, and did, you know, so we had to adapt as a workforce, um, which we did successfully. But, you know, um, a big thank you to all of our customers, you know, who've retained the services of Tiger during what was quite a difficult time. But we've always maintained our strategy is we want to be a vendor agnostic analytics platform for mm -hmm. unified comms and collaboration. So we plowed ahead with a, a quite a major investment around Microsoft, and we're gonna we'll talk about that a bit today, but we've equally been doing a lot of R&D around Zoom and Ring Central. So those will be new um, sort of integrations for us throughout this year. Um, and equally, we've been doing lots around discussing with our customers what their needs are for the data that, that we have and how they might be able to best use that. So there's, there's been lots and, and we've just been building a huge pipeline. So we know, as I talked about just now, we know customers are now starting to assess 
what information do I need? What am I gonna, am I gonna do in the longer term? And ultimately we've, we've got a great pipeline with you know mid to large enterprises and, and we've just got to go and win that now. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so you're gonna showcase some of our latest developments today, starting with the Microsoft Teams integration, which as you said, we sort of put a lot of focus on last year, but we've actually continued to evolve it since we launched it last year. Yeah, that, that's correct. So I think what's coming out of it is that since we've launched the MS Teams interface, we're talking to our customers and we're showing them what it does and they're going, oh, we could use it for this and that. And actually yeah. all new use cases are coming out all of the time um, because of the sort of the depth and breadth of the, the data that we can collect. So, yeah, we're going to um, we're going to share and, uh, and, you know, live demos. We all enjoy them. Yeah, so. no pressure. <laughs> So hopefully if you can confirm, you can um, see see my screen now. I can, yeah. Okay, great. So some of you will be familiar with this kind of layout of Prism. Some of you won't because you might have been on one of the older products. Um, but so along the top, you can see the sort of um, different uh, interfaces. So we're going to dive straight into the Microsoft Teams. We're just going to do a quick 30 second recap of what the Microsoft Teams uh, effectively 2021 version included. So for example, we're just going to drop into one of the user activity dashboards. And along here, you can see that I've picked Tiger. I can drill into individuals within Tiger and just see some really high level uh, kind of participation and interaction events. Um, we can equally um, go into then something like the um, modality type adoption. So if you think about you're coming from a UC background, this is now a much broader data set. So we can see that people have been using screen sharing. We can see, you know, whether it be on a department basis or an individual um, using the directory selector that, that you know many of our customers will be familiar with. Um, ultimately, we can drill into that information. And it's, it's just to give an indicator um, as to how things are being adopted, how they're being used on a, a, on a, a daily, weekly, hourly, monthly basis, whatever it needs to be. Um, so what we're going to do, um, though, like now we've done that quick recap, um, is we're going to talk about the new things. So the first thing that we've added uh, in the 2022 uh, R2 release is the ability to report on the Microsoft call queues. So many of our customers will have used or have uh, implemented a contact center or call center type application. You know, you've got your five nines, you've anywhere 365s, et cetera. Yeah. Um, however, they also either in parallel or because they don't necessarily have those kind of really deep needs and requirements will use the call queue standard feature within Microsoft. So within Tiger, we, you know, we've got some call queues here that we can pick, but ultimately we can go in and we can start to look at the call queue performance based on our agents, um, you know, based on those kind of response times that you get within there. Um, and that's just a, a great presentation of that information because it helps customers on a you know an instant basis know how well they're performing. Okay. Um, so the next thing we're going to go into is um, the an analytics capability. So within uh, some of you again be familiar with this because it's great to see the data, but ultimately what we want to also be able to do is is really drill into it and to query it and see more detailed information um, using the analytics query. So again, within here, I can go in and I can pick uh, some of this information. I can go into, so let's just say this month. And along here, I can obviously see whether things have been answered, the direct call queue duration. I can scroll through. I can also see you know, whether different modalities were used. It's a really easy way of, of seeing that. And if I just wanted to filter on something, then obviously I can pull in the call queue duration. I could put in there that we want to actually increase it's anything that's um, over one minute. And then by filtering, obviously now I've only got things that are over one minute. So a really easy, simple user interface. And again, it should be pointed out, this is just to kind of set the scene for people. If you want to see more detail on this, then clearly our, our account team would be happy to, to give you a much more sort of in-depth uh, demonstration. Uh, so we, we then also have uh, the capability to do things around, um, so hold on two seconds, if I just go back into analytics, we're gonna go into the Teams uh, sessions now. So within here, this is really great information. So I want to be able to see that I had a session 
And within here, I can go and I can see that there were three parties within that session. So if I just again, um, then click here. And that will actually take me into the detail of this session. And you can see that the different members of that session, I could actually see that Richard did use screen sharing and video, or sorry, uh, audio and video, but not screen sharing. I can obviously see that Tim did the same, but I can actually then sort of make sure when did they join the call? When did they leave the call? Did they have a disconnect and a reconnect? So there's a lot of detail that we can get about the meeting. So if you imagine, come later on today, there'll be a meeting with, you know, 80 people on it that we'd be able to go in and sort of understand, did people kind of drop out and reconnect? It's, it's really, really good information. Um, equally, we're then going to still, you know, again, this is a, a feature that Tiger's always had around call concurrency or session concurrency. So those of you using direct routing, you're using session border controllers, you want to know how many concurrent voice calls and things there are, then again, Tiger can still deliver that kind of really clear visual representation of where your problem areas may be. And again, we can drill right the way through in here and actually eventually see a leg by leg representation of that information. And you can see the little overlays of actually that's where I get my pinch points. So there, there's a huge amount. I mean, I, I was talking to one of our largest clients just a couple of weeks ago, and they were really interested in this because they just didn't have an easy way to understand what was happening on a, on a, on a basically a 15 minute or 30 minute um, sort of basis. So and I think, yeah, I was just going to ask about as people return to the office and it's that understanding, isn't it, of um, who's using video because we're, we're all continuing to use video now. Um, whereas years ago we perhaps wouldn't have done, we would have used just standard voice. So, yeah, that's right. Uh, absolutely. And and then we're just and like I said, when we talk to our customers, they just constantly sort of bring up brand new use cases. I mean, we had one the other day where someone said, "Can you tell us the version of Microsoft Teams someone's using?" Because if we know there's a, an issue with a particular version, it's just really helpful to know that actually X percentage of our our user base haven't yet been able to apply that update. So again, that's information that we have got that we hadn't necessarily thought about exposing, but the analytics tool just has it and we can drop that field in, build a query on it, and ultimately you can, you can see it immediately. And what you've just shown us there specifically related to Microsoft Teams, um, but how does that compare to the Ring Central and Zoom um, R&D that you mentioned earlier? Yeah, so um, so as with always, I mean, it probably goes without saying that, you know, we used to have differences in data integrity and quality between, say, Cisco, Avaya, Mitel, Siemens. But um, fundamentally, it's similar. So Ring Central and Zoom, you know, there's a, a similar level of information available through the R&D we've, we've done. And ultimately, Tiger being or Prism being a, a generic, you know, agnostic uh, analytics tool, we have uh, basically we'll just be inserting that data however we can with what's available um, for each of those vendors. So you'll get a very similar experience, um, but there might be some some anomalies. Yeah. OK, then. Um, so I know one of the other challenges that customers have been speaking to us about is um, how to avoid lost data. So can you tell us a little more about this? Yeah, so with the um, emergence of these cloud platforms, if you imagine um, in days gone by, you'd have your own system. You would have a system like Tiger listening to that all the time. But if Tiger for any reason wasn't available, the system would normally kind of buffer that information. Um, if you think about these new cloud platforms, Microsoft, Cisco, Zoom, ultimately they're running it in a single instance for hundreds of thousands possibly of tenants and the amount of data created is vast um, and that's why they tend to prefer these kind of aggregated or, or you know kind of very slim line or thin data sets but the data that we retrieve is vast and unfortunately what they do is they apply some limits that say if you don't collect that data within a certain period of time then it's lost forever because they physically cannot continue to store it for, for indefinitely. So we've had a lot of customers 
you know, sort of expressed to us, well, we don't want to lose the data, but we don't want to know what we want to do with it yet. So we've been supporting them in saying, that's, that's fine. Let, let's just bring the data into Tiger. Let's also consider different requirements for, for how long you need the data. Um, so we're having lots of really interesting conversations about that with customers at the moment. Yeah. OK, so we're actually keen to understand um, the views of the audience on this one. So we're going to go to a poll now. Um, and that asks, how long are you storing and accessing your data from your UCNC systems? There's a, a four options there. So hopefully everyone's got an answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's interesting. It's still changing. I thought you having one of those live demo moments, Louise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, the, the top percentage at the moment is, oh, actually saying um, not known. So that's interesting followed by kind of indefinitely they can store it for as long and as they need so um you know th that's good to hear isn't it and probably reflective of quite a few tiger customers on the webinar yeah i, I think um you know clearly if you don't know then it's it's a good opportunity maybe to speak to your data protection officer or your CISO um, just to sort of talk about whether there's any compliance or regulatory needs certainly within yeah. financial services it's seven years um, but in other businesses and organisations, it, it's shorter, longer. I mean, in, uh, you have um, freedom of information um, requests and things like that. So, yeah, we, we, we certainly see a variance in our user base. But, yeah, certainly I'd recommend you sort of at least ask the question. Absolutely. Well, that leads us quite nicely on to our next discussion, which is around data storage and accessibility. Um, so just exploring this theme a little bit more really can you give us some more detail on why it's so important to think ahead with regards to your data yeah absolutely so this is this is an area that's sort of in a real interest to me personally and, and the team because um the data that we hold has now as i mentioned earlier become a lot broader than the just telephone call records okay now however they were very important because ultimately if you miss a customer call you might miss a sale or you might you know have a complaint so um but we're finding that a lot of the the customers we have have wider business intelligence teams they have data analysts um and they're collecting sources or data from many sources and they're effectively consolidating that data to actually sort of help make better business decisions. Now, we might not necessarily know what they use the data for, but it's important for me to promote to my customers to say, do they know the data exists? Um, so what we've been doing is um, as part of our kind of wire framing for um, Prism, actually, on the dashboards, when we go to customers and we talk about what is it you want? You know, we've got this data what shape might you want it does prism fit the bill if prism doesn't fit the bill have you got the skills in house to maybe do other things so just on screen you can see that we've we've um, done some work in power bi um, just to illustrate really what's possible from the data within tiger and this is about call quality um, so you know whether or not the experience of the call was good um, so you can see we've actually picked on Matt here and Matt's got a couple of children at home who you know seem to like Netflix or uh, playing on the Xbox and actually you know or he's got you know, low bandwidth so this is a way of taking the data being able to present it in a different shape being able to expose it to people in the business that that might need it and imagine you were overlaying that with you know, call center data where actually a customer speech analysis was saying, actually, I had, I'm, I'm very upset, I'm frustrated, I want to complain. Well, what if you overlaid that call queue information and, and queuing time with that sentiment analysis? Um, ultimately, you could have a very powerful kind of understanding of, of how that experience went and what could lead to it. Again, you saw, you saw the call queues dashboard that we had. This is just an alternative way of looking at that data and actually adding a couple of extra things. And clearly, as we continue the feature development within Prism, we'll be adding more and more capabilities. But it's just really important to stress that actually it's possible to do things outside of it. And I'm sure many of you have got teams within your organisation that can do this type of work. 
Yeah, it definitely seems like there's a lot of value in what we've been discussing here. And like you say, just thinking about um, things and visualising things a little bit differently. Um, so at this stage, um, we're 20 minutes in, so I'm quite conscious of time and just making sure that we're leaving enough time um, at the end for questions. So can we finish off by talking through what's on the horizon um, for us? Yeah, absolutely. So we've, we've been doing an awful lot of work and um, we, we're very pleased to announce that uh, um, some of you remember our directory integration tools and capabilities. And what we've um, done is, is actually decide we're going to launch this as a standalone product. Um, and we're, we're quite keen to to let you all into the secret today, really. And we'll be launching a new um, website for this in the future. Um, and we're, we're going to call this product Q. Um, and it's actually going to be uh, effectively, I mean, we're happy, we think it's an enterprise tool, we use it for our directory integration, but we're actually going to launch a sort of a, a shrink wrapped version with certain functionality. And we're actually going to give that away for free. OK, so pretty soon this will be on a website. Um, we, we will share with you that information as it as it happens. Um, but what Cube does is it is a data transformation tool. So it acquires data. It allows you to manipulate that data, contextualize it, join it with other sources and then be able to actually put that somewhere. Now, what we're going to do here is we're just going to show um, a couple of examples. So. Just within here, uh, we can go into a sort. Now, as I said, we will be doing this as a slightly sort of lower um, sort of capability. We'll limit some of the functionality, but this product is already doing some of these things. So for example, connecting to UC sources, we can do that with it. Um, but ultimately, um, what we're gonna do here is, is release with data sources, um, transforms, and finally, those, those sort of destinations as to where that information is gonna go. Now, I'm going to run this in what's called debug mode because I want you to actually see how things work. But what we've got in here is a few Excel spreadsheets, which is different types of data. Um, and you can see here we've got some, some email based information. In here, we've got some information about the person or the user. And finally, in this one, we've actually got some information about some departments and cost centers. Now, a lot of, a lot of people manipulate spreadsheet data all the time, or CSV files. And what we're going to do is we're going to start joining this data. We've got some inspect points, so there's real time debugging here. And we're going to join it, the data that we joined from these two files with this one file here. We're then going to do some splitting, some sorting. And finally, we're going to push that data out in a consolidated format. Now, I can run this outside of debug mode and it's in milliseconds, but we're going to run it in um, in debug mode. So we're going to press play and the system's now gone across and it's extracted those files. It's going through the process so I can go into this window and I can see there's all my user data. I can then go into this window and I can actually see my department and cost center information. I've now joined into here and I can see that I've now got all of that information joined into the send, receive and read actions for the email. And finally, I'll go for, I won't go into the detail about the split and the sort, but if I pop this out here, it's going to download an Excel file, which has now taken the source of those three files and it's actually joined it into that consolidated Excel file where I can actually you know, use that information. I could now put that into pivot tables. I could put it into Power BI or Tableau visualizations. Um, so I could even do a chart within Excel. So it's, it's doing all the hard work every time for me. I can run that on a schedule. So if I want to you know, imagine pushing that up into those Power BI um, tables, obviously what I can do is I could actually use that file to put into these dashboards. OK, so this is a, it's a fantastic tool. We've proven it with you know, hundreds of customers using Prism. And we're really, really excited that that consumer three version of it will be able to be in your hands within the next uh, sort of, you know, probably a couple of months. Um, but, you know, we're really excited about that. And we think that's just a you know, part of what we've been working on. But we've also um, you know, been working on lots of other things. So uh, we've, we've been, you know, I mentioned earlier the way that if you don't collect the data, it's lost forever. 
So we've, yeah. we've created a, an events, uh, a listening service, which is a lossless and it runs in the cloud. That could be used across so many different functions. And we're going to be able to extend that. And, you know, we were talking to a partner yesterday where they deliver notifications via these kind of um, rest hooks. And ultimately, we can listen for those. We can push them elsewhere and transport them. And effectively, that's a low code solution. So if you've got yeah. your own DevOps teams, you would be able to maybe use the Tiger software to actually help you achieve an outcome without having to develop the full end-to-end -end, uh, software. Um, we're excited to say that Cisco have, have announced further API capabilities around the WebEx calling platform. So again, we'll be we'll be doing some R and D on that. Um, and we just continue to commit to broadening our capabilities. We're, we're listening to our customers. We're, you know, we're, we're sort of finding out these new use cases and we're just constantly looking at what we can do next and what we can add into the into the product. Oh, sounds good to me. You know, I'm obviously here all the time, so I know we've got an incredible amount lined up and it's exciting times for Tiger. I think the key takeaway um, for me, really, and it sort of links back to the panel discussion, that we had at the beginning of the month where Caroline and Philippa were talking about, you know, um, things change all the time and you might not know what that exam question is, but at least make sure you have access to the data for when you do know what the questions from the wider organisation are going to be. So, um, yeah, thanks for taking us through all of that. Um, so let's open the session up now for some questions. So you can either um, put the questions in the chat or email hello at tiger.io. Um, or if you're feeling really brave, unmute and ask Ben. <laughs> We'd love to hear from you. Any easy ones, please. <laughs> There was one in the chat window, uh, Ben, around um, how about reporting on call and video quality, which Adrian asked. Um, so I've responded to that, but I don't know if it's something you are able to show now if we've got time. If not, I'll arrange a separate demo with Adrian um, after this. Uh, yeah, so actually that's a really good, really good one. So yeah, certainly got a bit of time. Um, let's just quickly go into here. Um, so for example, we've got session quality. Ah, typical. Box me out. So um, just over here, I mean, Rob, you do this bit so much better than me, I have to admit. But um, in here, you can see that we've got um, the session quality. Uh, I'm just going to go into edit mode just to demonstrate the additional fields that are available as well. But within here, this is the session. Obviously, each individual user gets a particular leg for each part of their session. So you can see Stephen here has got a main audio, but he's then also got some screen sharing and video. So ultimately, if you scroll to the right, We've actually taken and assessed all of the latency, packet loss, media information and given you a, an, an overall judgment as to whether or not the audio or video quality was as, as acceptable, good or poor on those. And if there is a, an issue, we will actually identify where that issue was um, was. Um, equally, we've got lots of information over here, which, you know, we can show you about the network. Um, where there's just tons of info um, around devices, around you know, quality. But this is the to the point of the Teams um, application version. We've also got the media device drivers. We've got the device names. So imagine you deploy a thousand Jabra headsets in your business and you find out that 200 people never, ever use them. And you've invested not only that money, but then they're also complaining that they're getting poor audio calls. Well, ultimately, you're able to assess what's, um, you know, what's gone wrong there or potentially gone wrong. So, um, yeah, just as a summary, I know, you know, Rob, I, I know you and the team do a brilliant demo on this. And but again, if you think about the Power BI element that I showed you, all of these types of measures and things are available. And we will be, again, launching new features all the time around, you know, how you visualize that data in PRISM 
or if you want to do something before, then clearly we can we can have those discussions with you. Okay. Um, so the other question was: um, Are there less or more security risks attached when storing data indefinitely? Uh, so th there shouldn't be more risks because actually, you know, with a secure development policy, it should underpin the way you develop software. So whether that be encryption at, uh, in transit, encryption at rest, uh, whether it actually be the way that you actually, you know, kind of protect those applications. We do pen testing on our apps all the time. So the actual length of time you store data for isn't a factor in how secure the application should be. OK, and um, how often do we are we doing product updates? Um, Michael's asked, do we need to do anything at the time and, and is advance notice given? Yeah, so um, where we went through quite a large product update, so with the my move from 2018 to 2021, that was done in what's called more of a, a sort of a waterfall development process. Um, since we've released that, we've actually migrated to a, an agile and scrum process. So we now do monthly scrums and there is an ability to release each month, um, but it depends whether or not we feel the need to. So, um, you know, recently we have been releasing each month and in there it's a, a number of product features. There's been some resolutions of some issues. I'd love to say that we have completely bug free software, but I don't think anyone can claim that. So, you know, we do have to release some release those. Um, in terms of notification um, on advance notice, clearly we don't force you to upgrade each time. Um, if your system's working and you're, you're happy with it, then unless there's a feature that you des you, know, you want, then obviously at that point, and, and we have been doing software assurance um, contracts with customers. So it is a bit of a speak to your account manager, find out what sort of works for you, and we, we can certainly help you. Okay, so these questions are coming in thick and fast now. So um, uh, Adam's asked any plans for a Tiger user group event this year. I can take that one if you like. I, I, well, do you know what? <laughs> Things move really quickly, Louise. <laughs> what you need to bear in mind is we need to find a venue, Ben. <laughs> I actually, I I know we we've talked about this before, but it got raised yesterday. And um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to put a survey out to the customers. I haven't spoken to you about this, so sorry about this. We're going to put a survey out to the customers <laughs> because we love the user group, and we were going to do it more as the webinars and the you know different yeah. sessions. But and and we're conscious that things have changed. Um, but if there is a a desire from our customer base to do a user group and we, you know, people will visit a venue, then we will look at running an event. But the plan at the moment is to continue these type of regular sessions, obviously a more engagement, maybe it's a remote user group session, but you know, uh, I'm, I'm gonna get the use from Louise in a second. Um, but yeah, we look, nothing is off the table and we love the event. We love seeing our customers. We love going to the venues. Yes, it's a massive undertaking as a business to, to do that, but we 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 think it's a brilliant event. And, and if you guys can come and you can come and visit us, we will put the event on. Yeah, sounds good to me. And then um, the last question is, um, you mentioned work on both Teams and Ring Central. Are there plans to look at more integration with Avaya contact centres? Um, so not in the immediate future. I mean, I think transparency is key here. Um, we've got quite a big roadmap, you know, to complete the um, Microsoft pieces we're doing, the um, Ring Central, Zoom. Like I said, Cisco are coming back with, um, you know, additional features. But that's not to say, I mean, that's the key of an agile development process. So things can change. They can be increased in priority, decreased in priority. So um, it's it might be something we could do, but it's certainly not something on the immediate roadmap. Okay. Um, so any more questions from anyone else? Let's give it 30 seconds. If not, I'm happy to um, wrap things up there if you're happy, Ben. Yeah, I mean, I would just yeah like to thank everyone for their time. I appreciate we're competing with all of the other 
work that they have on and all of the other partners that they might be working with and everyone's trying to sort of uh, you know keep in touch with their customers in a, in this in this new way and I think it's great and a big thank you to you and your team you know these, these are great events and I know how much planning goes into them. Yeah okay so I'll echo that then um, thank you very much for giving us your time to provide an update and thanks to everyone who's attended we hope you have found it a useful session um, this webinar has been part of the two-part spring series, um, so if you'd like to recap any of the content from today's webinar or the panel discussion earlier this month, please head to our website, tiger.io, where you can find links to those. Um, we're always open to receiving feedback, so um, give us your ideas for future webinars or um, in-person events and panel discussions. Um, and uh, we're hoping to be back in some shape or form in autumn, either with webinars or face-to-face. Or -face. And if you have any further questions for us at Tiger, please get in touch with your account manager or on hello at tiger.io um, because we're always happy to have a chat. So hope you have a great day, everyone. Thanks very much and goodbye. Thanks, everyone.